Welcome to episode one of Editing Your Videos, the new series on my channel where, you guessed it, I edit your videos. Today's very first episode is brought to you by my friends over at Epidemic Sound. If you would like to get your first three months of Epidemic Sound completely free, then go to the link in the description below and use the promo code Daniel Schiffer 2021 at checkout. So I went on Instagram and I asked you all to send me your footage to this email address. We got over 500 submissions. So if you all like the series and we want to do more, there is no shortage of content to choose from. But the catch is that I will have never seen the original final edits of these videos until after I have already completed my version of the edit. And if that wasn't already hard enough, I will also only have one hour to make these edits from start to finish. So let's not waste any more time and jump right into our very first submission, which comes from EJ in Malaysia, who sent us their ice cream B-roll. Now, because I've never seen this footage before, I need to start by looking through and seeing what we have. We start off with a push in here of our ice cream container and all the condiments. It looks like there is a couple of playing cards, like Uno cards, stuck to the bottom of the ice cream. So he flips the lid in there. I'm assuming this is supposed to be some kind of match cut. Okay, so that's actually pretty interesting. He has his friend drop the ice cream spoon into his hand. He throws it to his other hand and... We got the scooping shot next, that looks nice. Then we've got the syrup shots, there's some sprinkles here, then just kind of finishing off the ice cream. Pretty straightforward. So I need to pick a take from the first shot that I like. I'm gonna start the clip around there. He swings it upwards, and I'm just gonna cut the clip here. Okay, now I'm gonna go ahead and slow this down. Now before I go any further, I'm gonna need music because that is what's gonna determine the pace of this entire edit. So here in Epidemic Sound, I wanna find a song for our ice cream video. When I think of ice cream, I'm thinking of fun and playful. I'm going to go into genres and I'm going to start with funk and let's just have a listen. It's actually quite good. I'm going to click on the artist's name and see what else they got. That's the one. Okay, I'm going to download that, download the full mix, back in a final cut, and we're just going to drag that straight in. Now, the great thing about Epidemic Sound is that you can download as many songs as you like, and whether you're making videos that are for personal projects or for clients, they have amazing plans for both. Because I do a lot of both personal and client work, I use the commercial plan. Whenever you're done making a video for a client and you've sent it to them, you can simply log into your Epidemic Sound account, clear their video yourself to protect them from any copyright claims. Or if you are unsure of when your client plans to post the content you've made for them, you can just as easily send them a clearing invitation so that they can clear their own content when they are ready to upload. It's no secret that I love Epidemic Sound and I've been using their site for literally everything over the past several years now. So if you're interested in joining, then make sure you go to the link in the description below and use the promo code Daniel Schiffer 2021 for your first three months of Epidemic Sound completely free. On that drop, that's where I want the cap flip of the ice cream container to start. So now we're gonna bring that shot in and I'm gonna click through here to the frame where we can see the label. Uh, I think right there. And for our first clip, we're gonna end it maybe there. So I'm gonna create a speed ramp by hitting shift B. I'm gonna speed this up to normal speed. A, we'll speed ramp that. 20%, set a keyframe there, and then another keyframe around there. Not bad, okay. So let's bring in our next clip after the lid flip, which should be the spoon toss here. So it looks like the challenge with this next clip is that his friend's hand is in the shot and we don't want it there. I think we're just gonna like start kind of cropped in and then zoom out. So I think we'll start the clip here. And we're just going to zoom in until we don't see that hand. Oh boy, that's a lot. That's like 200%. That's fine though. Back to 100. Let's see, is the hand gone? Yep, you don't see the hand. Let's slow it down to 80% just so it's a little easier to digest. And we're going to do a speed ramp when he throws it. What was that? <laughs> that must have been okay they must have gotten this individual right here to drop the spoon and now he's trying to duck out of the frame unfortunately we can see you all we have to do is some kind of zoom in here so set a keyframe there and there we'll cut the clip here on our last frame we'll zoom in i don't even know 158 percent I can live with that. We have our ice cream scoop next, and I don't want 
too much of the hand in the shot. So I think we'll cut it here. I'm gonna go ahead and slow this down to 80%. I'm gonna stabilize this for sure. Here we have the ice cream dropping in the bowl. You can see we have a twisting movement and then the ice cream drops in. It's a lot of shake right there. There's too much of a delay between the twist and when the ice cream falls. I want twist and fall. I think I'm just going to cut out the twist, grab the part of the clip where the ice cream falls and make my own twist. Set a keyframe here and then we'll wait for the ice cream to start falling. That's where we will set another keyframe on a rotation here. I'm going to try and accentuate this movement by setting a keyframe on our scale when our rotation ends. And then I'm going to go back to the start, zoom this out a whole bunch because we can right around there. Oh yeah. Oh, you know what we can do is we can track the ice cream falling. Yep. So on our second keyframe rotation here, we're going to set a keyframe on our position. Then we're going to go to the end frame and just drag that. You know what? I actually kind of like that. On to our next shot. We have the ice cream reveal. Um... Okay, so I'm going to delete that. I'm a strong believer that in sequences like this, you don't have to hammer home every single action in the video. We already see the ice cream being scooped. We see it being put into the bowl. We don't necessarily need another shot of the ice cream going in, but... I'm, I'm content with that. We can get straight into the condiments now. Yeah, again, similar to the ice cream going in the bowl, I don't think we need this many shots of condiments. This is a good shot here where you can see the two bottles because it shows kind of what we're about to do. And then we have a shot of the ice cream here close up with the syrup being drizzled on. And I like that as well. And this actually happens to work perfectly because we have this downward movement now where we track the ice cream going into the bowl. Now we can grab a downward movement of this stuff hitting the table. So we can make a cut right there. I'm gonna slow this down to 40%. What I wanna do now is kind of make these shots flow into each other a little bit better. So I'm gonna go up into my smooth transition layers from Ryan Nangle. I'm going to grab the pan down one and put that here. And then the pan down two and put that there. And this we can adjust. So this isn't tying in completely smooth just yet, but I have an idea. I'm gonna duplicate this clip and drag it up and I'm going to extend it out one frame and then delete the rest. So now we have a frame kind of overlapping with the next shot and all I'm going to do is drag this frame up to the top here. Now in our effects I'm going to grab the shape mask and drag that on and just feather this out a whole bunch. <laughs> I know this looks crazy but hear me out. Now I'm going to go into motion blur. I'm going to grab the moderate motion blur. I think this is also from Ryan Nangle. You can cut that down right there. And now when we play this back we get this. Oh, you know what it's missing? We're gonna go into our effects here and grab the directional. This is a type of blur and drag it onto that frame set it to 90 degrees and then crank the amount all the way up. That is going to look a lot better. I can already tell. Going to play that back. Boom. The ice cream goes down and then we're just straight into the next shot. Love it. And then we're into our next shot here of the syrup going onto the ice cream. I actually really like that shot. Let's slow this down to 40%. I'm just going to trim it up for now and see what our next shot is. Is he going salt bay? <laughs> That's awesome. Okay. I don't really know what to do with this. I think there's just too much time in between when he grabs the sprinkles and then we have like a good shot of them doing the salt bay off the elbow. So I, I think I'm going to use this is two separate shots. We're going to have to do some kind of speed ramp from this into this shot. So I'm just going to play this back with a little more volume and find a part of the song that will sound good with a speed ramp. Yeah. Pop. Right there. So let's just make a speed ramp right here. Bring this up to two times. Pull this back a bit. We'll set this to 20%. On this shot, I want to stabilize it. I'm going to make sure that's set to smooth cam. Let's punch all the way into 140. Really get close on that. Go back to the start and set some keyframes here. And then go to the end. And we'll zoom out to 110. And then on this shot, I want to accentuate that zoom in a little bit more. So we'll start at 100. We'll go all the way in to 120 and stabilize. And now if we play that back, that's good. For the sprinkles, the salt bay, we're going all the way down to 20%. And we're just going to crop into 120 and bring that down. Set some keyframes. Go to the end here and go back out to 100. 
Perfect. Okay, we're in the home stretch here. Let's go ahead and finish this up. I would have had the exact same reaction. Is this a plastic flower or candy? I've never seen that before. I think I'm going to completely disregard these last few shots of the flower. We're going to use this as our hero shot because in my opinion, this is the best frame to end the video on. Maybe if I slow this down 20%, I'll reverse it. And instead of starting the shot here, I'm going to start it like there. Cut it on this side as well. Let's go ahead and stabilize this shot. Bring that more centered. Now really quickly, I'm going to add a color grade by bringing on Color Finale Pro. Let's use my basic LUT from my Vintage Look 2 LUT pack. This is the LUT I use like pretty much for everything. Now I'm just going to hit Command C to copy that grade, highlight the rest of the clips, and we're going to paste the grade onto the rest of the video. All there's left to do right now is I'm going to go back to Epidemic Sound and download a bunch of sound effects. I'm going to sound design this entire sequence really quickly, and now we are ready to compare the final edits. I think because we pretty much already know what mine is going to look like, we'll start there. So here is my edit of EJ's ice cream B-roll. I mean, considering how quickly I had to edit this, I think this is pretty good. It of course helps that this footage is really well shot and well lit, but at this point, I am a lot more curious to see EJ's original edit of the ice cream B-roll. So kind of as I expected, the edits themselves are very similar just in terms of how it's all cut up, but the vibe is completely different. I think a lot of that has to do with the music and shot selection. Also, as I expected, EJ used all of the shots he sent me whereas I didn't use a bunch of these. I do actually really like this little film burn transition here, and I thought these two shots were cut together well as well. I will also admit that this final little bit here of the flower being thrown onto the ice cream turned out a lot cooler than I thought it would be. Something else I just noticed is that EJ's speed ramps are a lot faster than mine, and he also didn't at least I don't think he stabilized a lot of the shots. And I can say with certainty that EJ's original video had a much stronger ending. I love how dramatic the throw of that little flower was. I didn't really know what to do with it at the time, but I think he did a really good job. I want to know from all of you in the comments down below, what stood out to you in each version of these edits? What did you prefer about one edit over the other? What did me or EJ do that you would have done differently? And on that note, thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, hit it with a like. Don't forget to subscribe. Follow me on Instagram. Instagram at daniel.schiffer. And don't forget, if you would like your first three months of Epidemic Sound completely free, then go to the link in the description below and use the promo code DanielSchiffer2021 at checkout. And as always, I will see you in the next video.